All right, so for the uh, sixth day of the class, the last day of the class for part one, we've still got some polish that we need to do for our project. It's getting closer and closer to our final project for month one. And if you step back, we got to, that, to this point very quickly after we've got some basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because of jQuery Mobile. We're able to create this project pretty quickly. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to remind you that in the network folder, if you'd like to take a copy of my work, what I ended up with last time, I recommend it. But if you've got your project, we can take it from, from where your project is at. I recommend that you, you, you do use my project every time we start the class. I'll give you my code. And then at a certain point at the end of the course, month three, when you really need to diverge to have your project, I'll let you know then. But from now until the end, you can just keep it to be my project name and all of that. And then at the end of the course, we will diverge. You'll have your own project version. And um, we'll get to that eventually. So back to the network folder, if you'd like. And you will see my, you will see my uh, folder, Campus Android 1. And you'll see a folder with, with Tuesday's date. If you'd like to take a copy of that, copy the whole folder. It's got the date, and then what I do is I change the name of the folder to today's date. So I've got a backup from my last day of work, and my current work has this today's date. So copy that to your desktop or flash drive. And you should change that so that it's a new folder with today's date. The 25th. It's almost payday at the college. Um, so let's then, uh, you've got the copy of the project. Let's go ahead and open the index file. I'm going to run it just to remind myself where we're at. Two days ago was a long time ago. So I'm going to run, run the project. One of the things that I definitely remember that we need to do is we need to upgrade that jQuery mobile, those jQuery mobile libraries. They're still using the 1.3x branch. We need the 1.4x. We'll do that in a moment. But we've got this home screen, which is pretty barren, so we'll add some text and some pictures. The art screen is designed, but it's still also a little barren. We're going to borrow some text and pictures and fill in that screen. Computers. Computer screen looks fine, but when you click on these classes, those are pretty empty. We're gonna take some. Uh, we're gonna borrow some content to fill it with. We also want to add. Remember, we're going for an external link, and we're also going for a side panel. We want a side panel to slide into view here, or we can do it anywhere, but we're gonna do it here. We also need to make this pop-up screen work like a pop-up. Right now, it's a full-page screen, and then a real map that really works. We will be uh, doing that most likely today. And so I'm going to get back to my code. The number one thing that I want to do is I want to upgrade this to the latest version of jQuery. And I also want to set ourselves up so that we have local files. Right now, we are beholden to an internet connection. If the internet connection goes out, our project goes kaput. It goes completely plain black and white, no, no alignment, no division, no no style at all and no functionality because we lose the access to the JS and CSS files. So we're going to download those locally. Go ahead and open your web browser and let's go first of all to jQueryMobile.com. Let's go to the website jQueryMobile.com. We were here before where we looked up the details of the manual of jQuery Mobile. Right at the top, we've got over here, download jQuery Mobile, latest stable. We're still at 1.4.5, which was released at around October 2014, I believe, which in internet time is a long time. Usually they release something every three to six months. It's been a little while since 1.4.5. 1.5.0 is, is not long for this world, I, I believe. And then we're going to have to learn all of that new. Uh, so go ahead and click latest stable there. What it should do is automatically ask, would you like to save this or download it? Go ahead and save it. That is, would you like to open it or save it? Go ahead and click to, to save the file. Um, most likely, it'll download to your desktop. 
about seven and a half megabytes. Did everyone get a get the sign in sheet? Go ahead and put it on the desktop, and then we'll talk about what what we what we're going to do with it in a moment. That zip file has more stuff than we need, so let's take a moment to download it, and then I'll and then we'll see what we do with it. Mine ended up on my desktop, so if I go look at my desktop, I've got a zip file. Once you get this zip file, jQuery Mobile 145 zip, right click it on your zip file wherever it ended up, most likely the desktop or perhaps the downloads folder. You want to right click it and select extract all. Let it extract wherever it tells you. Click Extract. jQuery Mobile is uh, a framework. It's a library. It's files that give us the ability for data role to mean something. It gives us the ability that when we've got uh, a UL item, it upgrades it into something nicer looking. So it's a library that helps us do more. It's part of the larger jQuery family of libraries, and the jQuery slogan is write less, do more. And that's literally what we're doing. We write data, role, equals page, and that creates a full screen of content nicely designed and laid out. But in order for it to work, we need the files, and we were relying on the online files. Here's what we need to do. We just downloaded the the zip file and I extracted it. What I get inside of it is 19 items. I don't need all of these 19 items. The ones that we need are at the very bottom. We've got jQuery Mobile 145 min map, 145 min js, and 145 min css. These three files are the files that I need. So from that folder where you extracted everything, simply drag those three files. It's the last three ones. And notice the names look almost exactly the same, but one says jQuery Mobile theme, structure, inline, ignore all of that. It's the one that is simply at the bottom, jQuery Mobile 145 min, CSS, JS, and map. All three of those, drag them into your project folder, the same place where you've got your index file and your Kodika files. Just drag them out there. This is my project folder. My whole project is right there, index. And make sure you put those three supporting files. Can you mute your laptop, please? You got those three supporting files in this folder. And we need one more thing from the extracted folder. At the very top, you've got a folder of images. All of those icons that we have access to and other things are there. So without that, suddenly all your icons are gone. So drag that folder of images into your project folder. If you did it correctly, in the project folder, we have your index file, the Kodika files, the images folder, and the 3 jQuery files. .css.js.map. Once we've got those files in there, we need to edit our code a little bit to point to those files. But did everyone get all of those files and folder in your project? Mm -hmm. Need some help there?
All right, so these supporting files will upgrade us to the latest version of jQuery Mobile. Let's get back to, let's get to edit the index file. So I'll get back to Notepad. You can close your jQuery zip file if you still have it. But go back to Notepad and look at the top here, line 12. We've got a reference to the CSS file online. So we need to change that href here. You need to delete everything until the file name. Notice this is a full web address. HTTP cloudfrontnet slash mobile slash 131. Delete all of that until it only leaves jQuery mobile.css. And that needs to be changed to the proper numbers. So line 12 should only say href equals jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS. So line 12 now is no longer pointing to the online version of that file. Now it's pointing to the file that is in this folder that we downloaded. We're going to do the same thing on line 19. So just by doing it that way, it points to it? Yeah. So we'll do the same thing on 19. When we have a full web address, 
we can connect to an online file. When we have just a simple file name, it searches for it in the current folder. So 131, change that to 145.min.js. Line 19. So lines, lines 12 and 19 were updated. Um, we also need to deal with line 18. Line 18 points also to an online resource. Specifically, it points to what? jQuery 191. So it's pointing to an online version of jQuery. jQuery, think of it, is the main foundation that then jQuery Mobile rests on top of. If you don't have jQuery, you can't use jQuery Mobile. That's just the way it is. jQuery is a foundation for many types of frameworks out there to let you do things effectively and, and quickly. jQuery Mobile is on top of that that focuses on mobile projects. Notice the order that they're in. I mentioned it previously, but I'll mention it again. Very important that we first have jQuery and then jQuery Mobile. Because remember, the web browser reads it line by line, top to bottom. And if you try to access jQuery Mobile first, without accessing jQuery first, it doesn't behave how you think. So jQuery is first, then jQuery Mobile. Let's change line 18 so that it only points to the jQuery file. Simply jQuery 191. So we're pointing it to local files. Wait a minute, we don't have a local jQuery 191 file. Okay, we'll go download it from the web, and we will see that we're also pointing to a slightly outdated version. So we'll go, once you fix that so that it's only pointing to the JS file, save it, and then we'll go to the web. Don't run it yet, it's not going to work. Go to the web, and this time, at the very top left, the very first icon, which lo looks like an upside-down Wi-Fi signal, that's jQuery. This is all part of the same family. This is, we're in the jQuery mobile section. We've got jQuery section, jQuery UI, and also Sizzle and QUnit or QNIT. So go back to jQuery.com. We need to make a decision, however. jQuery is a framework that is constantly evolving. They're improving it they're expanding it and it changes. At the top right I see download and a big old button that says 1.12.1 or 2.2.1. Which should I download? One. One, two, either. Why? <coughs> either why? Which one has more support? One. Oh, you read ahead. Well, we need to make a decision here. 1.12 has more support for more older platforms, such as Internet Explorer 6 or 7 or 8 or whatever. And 2 drops support for older, older browsers. But guess what? We don't care about Internet Explorer 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, because we are going to target mobile devices. There's no such thing as Internet Explorer 6, 7, or 8, or 9 on the web, on mobile devices. If you're going to use a Windows phone, it starts at Windows 10 most likely Windows 11. You're never going to have an older version. If you're on Android, your web browser is going to be Chrome, probably version 40 or something. If you're running uh, I iPhone, you've got Safari, and that's going to be version 8 or 9 or whatever. So if we were creating a web project that was only going to exist on the web, I might want to use the 1x branch to target the most web browsers. But we are ultimately going to a mobile device. So we are actually going to go to the 2x branch. Yes, our project might not be compatible on the oldest devices, but you have to decide. I'm going to do it this way, but you have to decide when you make your own apps what sort of range of devices do you want to support. Yeah, I want to support every device. I want everyone to download my project. I'll get 1.12. 1 yes, but then you're dealing with very old devices that might not be able to handle other aspects of our project, like the database, or maybe even accelerometer features and other things like that. So for us, we're going to go to the to the most cutting edge, which is uh, branch, the 2x branch. So click the download jQuery button there. 
It'll tell you what the differences are between 1x and 2x under the section 2x. Again, doesn't support 6, 7, and 8. And then you've got download the compressed production version, the, com the download the uncompressed development version, download the map file, download the release notes. What we want is the compressed production version. Um, you want to right click it. I think if you just click it, it'll throw a bunch of text at you. You want to right click it and select save link as, or save file as, or save target as, whatever your browser calls it. But you want the compressed production version, and I'll explain that in a moment. Save link as. It's asking me where would I like to download it to. Save it to your project folder. Mine's on my flash drive. Inside the mobile website folder, remember, we've got the project folder, which has the date. And then inside of it is the mobile website. And inside of that is our actual project. So save that jQuery file inside the mobile website folder of your project. And also we want the map file. This will end in .map. I'll explain these details in a moment, but go ahead and also save the map file to, <coughs> to the same folder. Right click, save link as. It'll be jQuery 221min.map. Go ahead and save it to your project folder. After you save it, go back to your code, and you need to change like line 18 to be jQuery-2.2.1. So let me explain this. You usually see a file that ends in .html, .doc, .txt. This one is .min.js. Dot min dot css dot min dot map that extra extension that dot min means it's been minified which means it's been compressed and optimized to show you here i downloaded both the compressed and uncompressed just to compare the compressed version is 84 kilobytes the uncompressed is 253 kilobytes more than double the Compressed version, which is .min.js, looks like this. One, run, one huge run-on sentence of code. Very hard to deal with. The uncompressed one is a more human-readable and commented version of the code. Both will work. Either or will work. Um, but if I wanted to dig into the guts of jQuery, and change, no, I don't like actually what this, how this works. I'll change it to slice r.2. You can edit the code of jQuery. If you were going to, it would be a lot easier to do it in the uncompressed version than the compressed version, because it takes out all the white space, all the enters, all the comments. It's just computer language that the web browser or the app can handle. The other one is us for humans, if we want to work with it. But guess what? You're never going to open up jQuery JS file and, and do anything with it. You're going to leave that alone, and instead any custom code will be written inside of our kodika.external.js, or CSS. Because our CSS file is also minified, this is also CSS, and if I wanted to change the background color of my project, I can find a spot in that CSS file to change the background color, but we don't want to do that. We want to change it in our own external CSS files. So that's why we don't need the uncompressed version. It's bigger. It takes up more space in the project. Um, we're never going to edit it, so that's why we go with the minified version. If we wanted to edit it, perhaps, the map file sort of uncompresses it so that we can actually look inside of it and, and work with it if we wanted to. So even the map files are optional. These two map them so that it's more readable for us. Um, 
you notice those are pretty big files. So they might not even be necessary. The project will still work without them, but we will be the most um, you know, covering the bases. Let's see if this all worked. Um, save your index file and run it. If it worked, notice it upgrades it to the modern template. Uh, the the 1.3 branch was still the older style of design that it had more pronounced gradients and drop shadows like was the style a few versions ago on Android. If you've been using Android for a few years, you remember when it was so Tron-like that it had all these lights and shadows and it looked like something out of Tron. And then eventually Android changed their design over to a more flat design. And that's the current style where they call it material design. It's the it's flatter colors, it's muted colors, very simple drop shadows, if any. And it's here now, this version of jQuery Mobile follows that design, the modern design, flat design. Um, people people in this tech industry say, well, Android ripped off the iPhone because iPhone was doing flat design first, like six months before it. True, but then the iPhone ripped off Windows Phone because Windows Phone was doing it a year before it. But no one pays attention to Windows Phone. So, even though I do, I have one and I love it. But the point is, modern web design now, modern apps are a lot in this sort of idiom, this style flat design. We can, of course, add drop shadows if we want and glows and all of that, but it's a little passe nowadays. If we look at the you know, design manual for Android, it's not going to show us examples of beautiful 3D rendered content floating on a background of a shadow and such. It's going to be flat design. So if this is working, you're going to see that it's on the more flat design style. It went to the gray design, and this is our project.
All right, so what this should have done is it upgraded the design, yes. But now if you click on the uh, if you click on the little info button, I get something that looks like a pop-up. Have you tried that yet? Click that info button and it looks like a pop-up. It's not filling up the whole screen like it was before. It's got that little X to close. I would like this to actually behave like a pop-up. It just kind of appears. A pop-up should pop up. So we've got a transition for that. Let's go find where this info button is at. Let's go find where that info button is clickable to, to, to work with it. Now, we've, we don't have a very long project, so we can scroll around a little bit to find what we need to find. But let's get used to using the Find feature of Notepad to help us navigate throughout our project. Let's go up to Search, and we've got Find, and Memorize Control F. That'll help us find, that'll bring us up the Find box quicker. We're going to Find, and here, Find What? Well, you need to remember, this is, this is a skill that you're going to pick up on your own, where you need to remember, what are you going to search for that helps you find the thing in your 500 lines of code quickly? I've got a button that is an info button. Well, that makes me think. Remember, we use the info icon to, to display that. So if I search for data-icon equals info, that might find what I'm looking for. I may have used the info icon more than once. So it might jump me to more than one place. And you can confirm this by clicking count on the right side. I used it only once in my project. So I'm just telling you this because once your projects get more complex, don't waste time scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Search within your code to jump to the right spot. But be careful that you don't search for something that is so generic, like what if I was searching for, okay, I'm going to find the part where I did data-icon. Uh, I did that 10 times. I'm not going to find it very quickly. So icon. But thinking about it like this, the computer will search for it exactly how you ask for it. What if I did this? Equals icon. Match case. Find next. And so I can use different sort of um, ways to search because um, eventually our project is going to be pretty complex and so we're just trying to get down to Data dash icon. It worked a moment ago. Data dash icon equals icon. I'm not icon. Info. That's what I'm doing. Info. So this is what I meant. Equals quote info. That's still going to jump us down there. What I'm saying is I can type data dash icon equals info, but a smaller unit that I can search with is this. It might not be relevant right now, but as you work with your project and you spend a lot of time, remember time is money. And so if you don't want to waste your time, think about smart ways for you to search within your project. And notice we have the ability to do regular expressions. So if you're a regex pro, have at it. I'm not. Uh, so I'm going to search like a regular way and notice we can wrap around. If we're at the end of our code, go back to search at the top. If I don't want to wrap around, I can turn it off. If I called something, you know, if I'm searching for, let's say I'm trying to be quick and I'm searching for some for a place where I typed home, and I don't mean the home icon because that's lowercase, I mean home, capital H, and I select match case. So if I don't match the case, it says I used home 11 times. But if I match case, I used home four times. So sometimes match case, uppercase, lowercase. That might help you hone in on where you need to. 
And then notice here, if I'm searching for anything, um, what if we've got equals quote i, that'll find everything that is that is that way. Uh, match whole word only. There's nothing in my project that is exactly that. So if you're searching for an exact expression, match whole word only. So equals i equals info. Anyway, that is line. All of that to find line 67. Because after I write more and more code, I'm going to forget where my stuff is at, and instead of scrolling around, try search. So data role, href, data icon, data icon pause. Let's add a new item at the end here. Data dash transition. That's our animation equals pop. We've got a transition that's pretty nice for pop-up windows. Save it and run it. Click the info button and you should see that it displays in a little sort of pop-up animation that feels more like an actual pop-up. Can I see your, uh, your number please? 67. So let's see. Click it, pops up. What's the difference? Here's before. It just fades into view. And here's after. It pops up. What's that? Yes, because of the Thank 
All right, so it looks like uh, kind of getting a lot of people that are having trouble with this concept. There's no easy way for me to really make it easier. I'm just you need to need you need to make sure your files are where they're supposed to be. So guys down here, thank you for helping each other. Keep it down, please. Um, you need to make sure your files are all in the same place. 
if you've got your index file on your desktop, you don't have your supporting files, so your project will be blank. You need these supporting files to be in the same place as your index file. They're supporting files. They worked before because we had a connection to these files out on the internet. But now that we've moved it down to our local folder, your supporting files need to be where your index file is at. If it's not, move them there. And also I've noticed people are, are confusing the, the, gen, the February 23rd folder and the February 25th folder. Keep track of your files. Notepad helps you at the very top. It tells me this is on my F drive, on this folder, in this folder, in this folder, in this folder. I'm seeing that people have one window open here and one Notepad file open there, and it's not the same thing. And when you run it, you're not running what you think you're running. So be careful there. Keep track of your file names up there to make sure you're working with the right project. And so at this point, if it all works, it looks like this. We just fixed this pop-up item here. Um, let's work on... Before we continue to add more content, I want to add a little bit more of my structure. What I want to do is create a panel <coughs> that slides into view um, on my art screen. A, a side panel. It's extra content that I want to display upon this screen. And the way we'll do it is with some jQuery mobile, of course, but with another HTML5 semantic tag. I've got, a, I've got a footer tag for footer stuff. I've got an article tag for the main article stuff. I've got a tag for this extra side stuff. It's called a side, A-S-I-D-E, a side. So let's go over to our art screen. Notice my trick here. I'm searching so that I can find, so I can quickly jump to the section. It's called Art Section. I wrote a comment to myself where I said, Art Section. And if I search Art Section, it'll find it. But anyway, that is line 83. In line 83, we are going to add a new sort of content area that is outside of the main content area, which is the article but still part of the section of art. And when we click, we'll pull this content into view. So before the header, after line 84, give yourself a new line 85, we're going to create a new section of content here, but not literally section. It's called a side. An aside. In, in literature or graphic design, an aside is something outside of or next to or ancillary to main content. So this is an aside and what we're going to do is say data role panel. This is a side panel. So aside doesn't do anything special. It's just a container. The meaning of it is that it has side content. You could use an aside to create if you wanted like a, a sidebar of icons and such. But here with data role panel, it's going to behave like one of these slide out panels. It needs an ID so we can reference it. So that'll be ID equals, and we call this art cal. This is our art calendar. And remember what I said about if we use IDs with more than one name, keep it one single word. Don't put a space. Because technically, if you do art space cal, that's two IDs. And that's not what we want. We want one ID with one name, which is ArtCal. And usually you see with the second or third or fourth word in the, in the title, uh, the second or third word is capitalized, just for readability. ArtCal lowercase will work, but you'll often see this nomenclature of using what is known as intercaps or camel caps. Uh, so then I can put any amount of content that I want here. Uh, let's say this is our art calendar that's going to display some headings. Let's say it's going to display last month's calendar stuff, this month's calendar stuff, next month's calendar. At the moment, it's not going to be that complex that it'll pull down, you know, complex dynamic information. This will be static information for the moment. The last month was January. And let's say I'm going to create an unordered list, bullet points. 
couple bullet points. We'll fill in the details later. And uh, the actual content, just some placeholder stuff. This is nothing special. I'm going to zoom through it, but just create some content. The main concept is that we've got uh, the aside. That's the big thing. What I'm filling in here doesn't really matter. Just filling it with some stuff. So add that block. This is inside of your art section. And we will make it work in just a moment because we need content and then we need to trigger it. All right, so the side panel content, we are going to access it by clicking a button, and then it's going to pull this open. It's not that, not that special. The big specialness about it is that we're using the aside tag and the data role of panel. Besides that, it, that looks just like a section, doesn't it? And so what we want is a button uh, where we can click, and it'll pull this side panel visible. We've got in this screen here, in this art screen, we've got an area right here we can add a couple of buttons. We've even got a grid waiting for us right here. So let's scroll down a little bit till we find UI, UI grid A. Right here, line 149. 151. We've got some, we've got a four quadrant grid. We want a button here to pull open the art calendar. So uh, we'll, we'll call this art calendar and we'll wrap around and we'll wrap an A tag around it. It's going to be a button which we start off as an A tag, upgrade to a button, give it an icon, give it a target, and then it's a button. So href pound art cal, right? We, we gave the aside an ID. There's the ID. And we need to get used to. When we reference it with an href, make sure you put the pound symbol. 
when you actually write ID in the object, don't write the pound symbol. So this is going to open ArtCal. I want it to look like a button, because right now it's a plain old link, an HTML 1.0 link. So data dash uh, role equals button. And we want an icon, data dash icon. We have a, a, an icon for a calendar, uh, thanks to jQuery 145, jQuery Mobile 145, and it, I believe it's simply called calendar. Go ahead and save and run that, and that should then open up the. Let's see if that opens up the uh, calendar. It's a plain old link, so don't forget your closing a tag at the end there. Which element? Art cal data roll button data icon. Calendar. 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 Let's see what it should look like is that you go to the art screen, you have a brand new button, Art Calendar. You click Art Calendar, get a side panel. You click it again, it goes away. To do that ourselves requires a lot of JS and CSS. This works because we've created an element aside and we've assigned the data role panel, the end. Did that work for everyone? Be with you one moment. Well, yeah. Oh, can you just run that one more time, please? Just oh yeah, it's supposed to look like it's supposed to look like this. You go to the art screen and you click your art calendar, and it should look like this. We have three methods of animation here. This one right here, notice what it does is, it looks like it takes this top of my screen and it pushes it over, and then below it, it appears. We have some other, uh, other ways to do it. Um, if we back up to where we created that panel, so if you back up to line um, 85, if we back up to that aside, We've got data role panel and an ID. If we add a brand new attribute to line 85, this is right after data role panel, let's add data dash display and let's type overlay. Save it and run it. Check the difference. I didn't specify anything, which has a default. And then now I've specified overlay. See how that one is different. Display overlay should look something like this. I go back to art, I click on it. Do you see that difference, that subtle difference? The overlay makes that side panel on top of, it overlays it on top of my content. Whereas a moment ago, what happens is, it moves my main content off to the side, and below it is something there. So either way, gives me what I want. You have to decide which you like better. I'm doing overlay because it makes it look like that side panel does overlay. And there's one more, I forget what it's called, but we'll look it up, where it pushes the screen to the side in a slightly different way. Thing. It might be called inline. Let me check that. If it's not, we can look it up. No, it's not inline. push. We've got push. So if you put data display push,
Do you see that's a very subtle difference? If you don't see the difference... Green lines the same. Mm. Green lines the same. Yeah. Push and inline are the same? Yeah, I push the inline. Same huh. So one pushes the top content out of the way and it shows what's below it. Another one makes the content appear on top of it. And then the third one yeah. pushes it all together at the same time. You see that very subtle difference there. So whichever way you like, but I like overlay. So you can either use nothing, you can use overlay, you can use push. I will do overlay. Now it's good practice to have a way to close that panel. And you may have figured out that if you uh, if you click somewhere else, it closes it. Because I've got all of this empty area where I can close, where I can click, and then it closes it. But if you've got it this, you know, on a mobile device that fills it up like that much, it might be harder to click that target to close it. You have the ability to click elsewhere and it closes it. It would be better if I have a button that is obvious for people to click there to close it. So let's do that. I'm going to add a button so that someone can click that aside, that overlay <laughs> panel, and that it closes it. That's going to be a simple kind of button. So let's back up to our code. Line 86 before our January heading there. We're going to uh, create um, we're going to write some text that says close and we will wrap an A tag around it. So this will be a button. <coughs> this will be a close button. Once you click it, it closes it. Yes, it closes now when you click elsewhere, but it won't be obvious to everyone. And so our job, not only do we need to make our code work perfectly, but we also need to think in terms of user experience. Are we making our app easy to use for people? The more we make our app difficult to use, the more incentive we give them to not use our app. The harder we make it to use, then the less they'll want to use it. And so redundancy is good in, in apps. Make, let the people do things in a couple different ways, the way that they want, and they'll be happy. href, because it's a link. This will go back to the art section. When you click the close, it'll take you back to art. Okay, that's good. I want this to look like a button, so data roll button. This is also uh, a special kind of button, something related to jQuery mobile, in that there's a special relationship of some <coughs> buttons that close things. So we've got data rel. Relationship. Close. This is a close button. We're just, be, we're just making sure that this behaves how we want it to. It's a button. It'll take us back to the art panel. It closes the panel. I want an icon. data dash icon and the one that I like for this is if we call this one carrot not carrot 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 dash L or carrot however you want to say it carrot carrot L that's an L not a number one that's an L for left this is gonna be a kind of an arrow I didn't put arrow because arrow is arrow when carrot is slightly different that points to the left and I only want to display the icon. I don't want to display the text. Does anyone remember how to do that? How to make a button only display an icon, not text? No text. Data dash icon pause, no text. All right, go ahead and save and run that. What we've done here is we've added a button to make it obvious for people you can close this panel. It is closable by clicking anywhere else. But if you've got a screen that is too small with a target hit area, you might want to put a close button to make it easy and obvious.
So now in the art screen, I click on art calendar, it pops open, you've got this close button there. I would like it to be on the right side, I might, it might be more obvious on the right side. We're going to do that via CSS. Let's take a little detour here. We're not done with all of the structure of the site yet but maybe this is something I really want to take care of right now. This is the presentation aspect. We're still building the structure via HTML. Let's take a little detour to, to talk about presentation. I would like to move that to the right of the screen, and that's going to be via, um, via CSS. And so I want to write some CSS so that it can move it over to the right. There's different ways to do it. Let's uh, let's try it like this. Um, <coughs> we're going to write some CSS. We have a CSS file where we're going to save all of our CSS rules, our definitions, so that we can reuse it throughout our project. If you go back to your folder where your project is at, now we need to start to edit our codica.external.css file. Go back to your project folder, and you want to right-click to edit codica.ext.css. Edit with Notepad. We get this blank document, put your custom code here. Great, so line two. Here's where I need to figure out, this is, the, this is what I'm saying about, this is the next level of challenge in this project, CSS. We've seen that we can write tags and redefine the look of them. We can write our own classes and our own IDs. I haven't tried it this way yet, so we'll see if it works. What I want to do is I want to move that element to the right side of the screen. And the way this the way I'm going to try it is, we've got a an A tag right there. What if I write some code to move my A tag to the right? But wait a minute, I've got A tag in many places in my project, so that's going to move everything to the right that has an A tag. Well, I've got an A tag in one scenario that is also inside of an assigned <coughs> tag a tag inside of an aside. That's unique. I don't have that anywhere else in my project. And maybe I do want to add more side panels five more times. I'm still going to have the same concept in a tag inside of an aside. So I'm going to try that way. I'm going to target an, an a tag inside of an aside to align it to the right. Let's see if that works. So that means we need to first write aside. We've got the aside tag. And in CSS we don't write the angle brackets. It's assumed that it's a tag. It's assumed it's a tag because we did not write pound aside or dot aside. What's the difference between these two? Which is which? Is an ID class. Good. So if we have a pound, it's an ID. If we have a dot, it's a class. We didn't specify either. It's a tag. Aside space a, so we're saying an a tag inside of a of an aside. Angle brackets open and close, and we'll let's try just text dash align right.
Okay, it didn't quite do it. This is the thing that it always doesn't work on the first try because there's so many elements and I could be having um, conflicts with other elements, especially with jQuery mobile. Okay, you can do it like this. Instead of text dash align right, I wrote float colon right. Float this element to the right. Sometimes that works, sometimes it conflicts with other things. In this case, it seemed to have worked. So we're saying an, an A tag inside of an aside tag, float it to the right. Does that move your little icon to the right? Now be careful here, I did it several times. If I try to run Firefox right now, it's going to run my CSS file. Remember to switch back to your index file to float to, to run that. Alright, so we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. The um, this window here, I also wanted to load the current calendar from the website. Let's let's create another button right next to art calendar. And then what we'll do is we will open an external file, an external resource, an external website. Um, back on line 155, we're going to create another button, so a tag. This will be latest classes and this will have an href, we'll fill in the href in a moment, I'll just leave it empty because what I want to do is data roll button data icon bars. Uh, maybe we'll do bullets. Bullet points. So it's another button. This will show the latest classes pulled from the college's website. Therefore, this href is no longer going to point to anything within the project. It's going to point without. It's going to point outside of the project. So the href needs to have the college's address, <coughs> web address, http colon slash slash sdce.edu. It's going to go over to an external website, out of our website to their website. So regular web address. That's basic HTML 1.0. What we need to do, because now we're, we're working with jQuery Mobile, the latest generation of this stuff, we actually need to do a couple of extra things. This is going to open in an external website, and so we need to say then target equals underscore blank. That's also an old HTML attribute basically means open it in its own window. Take that website and open it in a bland, brand new blank window or tab. Target blank. And I need one more thing because we've got a jQuery mobile project and everything uh, it assumes that everything we're working with exists in this SPA. Remember? Single page app. All of our links are assumed that they're within this project. 
even though I put an external address. So I need to tell jQuery Mobile, this is actually a web address, a pro this is a link outside of the project. So after target, then here we will add uh, rel equals external. Just rel, not data rel. Unfortunately, there is data rel and there is rel. In our case here, rel relationship is that it is external. So this is a link off to someone else's website out on the internet, rel external. Open it in its own window. Save it and run it. And on your art screen, you should see that now it goes off to the college's website. I could change my address a little bit more specifically so that it actually goes to the catalog page. I don't remember that address, but I can copy and paste it. Let's see if mine works. I go to Art. I click Latest Classes. New window, and it goes off to the college's website. If you want it to go directly to the Take a Class screen, actually the address is sdce.edu slash class dash schedule. That goes directly to the class schedule screen. So on a mobile device, that's going to open up a browser. And then that's what the user will see will be the browser. Yes. Browser and then go back to the app. Yes, but once we get to this is still behaving like a web project. Once we get it to be an actual app, we will use something known as the in-app browser. That's what I'm gonna ask. Okay. So we will actually use the in-app browser to keep ourselves within the app. Yes. Where does that CSS and that we do show up in the final product? I'm missing that. We wrote the CSS inside of the CSS file. Yeah, well, where does it show up on the final product? It shows it? up. Oh, it shows up on the icon. You see here, if I go back to Art Calendar, my icon is on the right side now. It used to be on the left. All right, so up to this point, uh, we're going along pretty well. we still got other things to do. Let's take our first break. Uh, it's 7.31. We'll be back at 7.41. If you need any help, call me over. I'm going to put a copy of my code up to this point in the network folder if anyone wants it.